There are three key descriptors for defining stress. It's a state of physiological or psychological tension brought on by internal or external forces. So external stressors could be VCE. That affects us internally in terms of the way we appraise the stressor and thus our ability to cope. So the stress response involves both physiological and psychological changes. Psychological changes could be mood swings, irritability, difficulty concentrating. Physiological changes, we'll look at that when we talk about the fight-flight response shortly. So what's good about stress? Well, stress makes us more alert. It makes us more physiologically responsive to a physiological threat. So stress, in the short term, helps our performance. But chronic stress, that is long-term stress, can lead to wear and tear on the body and wear and tear on the mind. That is, it can lead to a mental disorder. The fight-flight response is an automatic response to a stressor that prepares an organism to either confront or flee a physically or psychological threatening situation. It's an adaptive response because it maximises our chances for survival when we're under threat. It's triggered by the sympathetic nervous system, resulting in the activation of the HPA axis, which will result in certain physiological systems increasing their activities, such as pupil dilation to enable us to see our threat more clearly. The heart rate will accelerate its activity, so blood is directed more rapidly to the parts of the body that need it when we're fleeing, for instance, such as the skeletal muscles. Other activities are suppressed by the fight-flight response so that we maximise diversion of resources to the parts of our body that need it. So, for instance, bowel movement will decrease, salivation will slow down, it's not essential that we digest our food, so therefore, like I said, we divert resources to the parts of our body that maximise our chances for survival. In terms of the physiological process of responding to a stressor according to the HPA axis, it starts with the hypothalamus which triggers the release of CRH, activating the pituitary gland, releasing the hormone ACTH, which in turn leads to activity in the adrenal gland resulting in the release of a series of stress hormones including cortisol, noradrenaline which increases blood pressure, adrenaline which amongst other things results in acceleration of the heart rate as well as the lungs, thus helping the body deal with the stressor. So in the short term the release of cortisol from the adrenal cortex is a good thing because it provides more energy for the muscles via the increase of glucose levels in the blood. But when we have chronic stress and cortisol levels remain high for an extended period, it weakens the immune system and results in wear and tear on the body.